everybody welcome back to the channel overcast skies but i'm in the mountains today i'm actually near interlaken at an a swiss military airport right next to it i'm in a huge bunker <laughs> if you can see it right here behind me cars parked up in there and today i'm on a um well we're busy today be right back with you So welcome back and as you can see in there my truck's parked and uh, I'm here working with uh, an association today and today I'm actually in character I have to be a gangster so we'll talk more about that as we go I'm along at the bunker and as you can see right here where I'm parked at right here this is where the airplane goes and then behind me is the entrance area inside the bunker once you've come in there's a place for where people sleep where people live because this is an underground place where they have decontamination showers here also and regular showers i guess and then this is a classroom and mess hall area and back there's a huge kitchen which we'll see that in a minute and then you have the sleeping areas okay there's one here and then i'll show you what they look like come through here now of course you have like officers quarters just kind of like that where the the officers stay at and we're giving a course here today so this is what the sleeping court will look like for the participants, all of these bunk beds here and places to store their clothing and that kind of stuff and racks and what you see right here and some, some wall lockers here to put weapons, I guess, or personal items they want to store and keep. Then here we have toilets here, okay, and what you normally have in toilets here. There's some areas I'm not going to go into, just don't need to. Um, like I said, today we are going to be, see if I can open that. Some of these doors are locked actually also. So let's we'll see if we can have a look inside the kitchen real quick. I'm trying to do all this before the participants arrive because we are giving this part of a program, of course, here. And then kitchen, well, kitchen it's all locked, but anyway. Yeah, you can't really see much in there. It's just where the refrigerator is, that kind of stuff. So it's all pretty much blocked off. We don't need to be, be in. We're just using this area. I think they're renting it and using what they have here. But uh, anyway, this is what we have. back again everybody and uh at the next phase of this uh really funny because the participants are actually policemen who are uh, acting the roles of, of people who've been uh, victimized and uh the thing though is <laughs> they forget that they're, <laughs> that they're playing a role and they keep acting like a bunch of cops so <laughs> it's quite funny but um they can't, they were telling me they don't speak uh you know, German, French, or English. They don't understand what I'm saying. And um, I only speak English to them, but uh, they t told me they were they spoke another language, another foreign language only. And um, I know better, of course, being <laughs> part, of, part of the team that's, that's doing all this. But uh, um, I looked down at one of them and I said, uh, are you finished? But I asked her in German and she goes, yes. <laughs> I said, oh, so you do speak uh, German. <laughs> it was quite funny. Anyway, um, yeah, I'll keep you guys a little bit of line. I'm not going to show you any of the people. Uh, it's not fair to them. And they, some of them are actually undercover policemen also. So it's important that they, uh, they, they maintain their, their um, anonymity. So anyway, talk to you guys later. Everybody, welcome back. This is going to be the end of this video. And just want to clarify a few things. Uh, some of the images you see are no longer, well, for example, the bunker. It's no longer being used by the Swiss military. It's a former Swiss military base that's there. And um, now it's being used by a car, car drive, a defensive and offensive driving school. Um, and while we were there, they, we saw them running around in, uh, in um, sedans, driving very quickly and that kind of stuff this morning. But um, we're using it just for this training today. Um, now in town, uh, you'll see 
you won't see a, a you know a few videos from me in town but but what was going on there was that we um uh, took the participant notes and i'm not going to tell you exactly what organization this is but and nor am i going to tell you what police these are but these are police that are that are taking a course that will help better help them and victims um of a specific type of um a crime actually and so um i work with this organization uh to help train this is the uh, this is a couple times i've worked with them to help train and uh, i portray a gangster in this and um hopefully maybe someday i'll be able to explain more in depth about that but um it was quite interesting quite funny i i don't show you the actual people themselves but we use several locations um for this course one of them actually is is in town and you which you you saw at the end of the video three of the officers uh, they're back sitting at a table and it looks like they're putting together drugs but what it is actually it's just powdered sugar and uh and um rock salt and what we did is we had them produce uh um, to, to produce these these materials uh so that for the next phase um in the in the course they'll be doing uh investigations and kind of stuff like that anyway so it's a it's a, it's a several phase course and the first part was today and next part i'm not involved in and uh at the moment but in the future maybe we'll see uh but anyway so this bunker is primarily to give you an idea of what's uh, inside this bunker it was actually it was double that size actually there, there's actually a second part uh to the left hand side of it also which is exactly twinned to the right hand side and what it is is that the the teams along with the pilots they can all be hidden up in there in case of war, in case they get it called out, and then they can they, there's, they have a survivability rate um, because it's also protected against not only just uh, it's got like um, I, I would say the upper part of that bunker it's at least eight foot thick, maybe thicker uh, from what I can see. It's covered with grass, it's camouflaged, but you know intelligence satellites nowadays can see all that stuff. So things have changed. And the Swiss also have bunkers built in the mountains. They have them built into fake houses and underground area locations. It's really, it's really crazy the way they have it. But so here is actually quite an amazing place. Um, and um, they keep it maintained because this could be reverted back to the Swiss use if it was needed, need to be. And it's all set up and it's all maintained. And here in Switzerland, they have um, shelters that go as far as you can imagine down underground even all up in the mountains here there's loads of stuff like that and and there are lots of websites out there that people have documented this kind of stuff but it's not here though it's just we're just using it for the day and i thought i would give you a little bit of insight what's inside of there i didn't show you all the rooms because one of them we were using it's going to be a future crime scene so it's sort of set up that way and um yeah not necessary to see that but anyway uh um, but just give you an idea of how they would be living if uh, if they were, you know, they're, they're training or they're preparing for war or they're at war. OK, so these crews, the entire crew would be in there. All the facilities are there. All they do is just put it put it together. All they have to do is just show up with the logistical side of it. Everything else is ready. Um, and it's crazy when you see that because these places are really maintained to a very high level and um very interesting i mean everything works uh the front door that thing was at least uh i would say a foot and a half thick and in, in it's, it's a piece of steel <laughs> so it's i don't know if it's hollow or what's inside of it but it's super heavy and it rolls on these uh these um these huge rollers actually and it's all maintained but anyway just want to give you guys a quick rundown of what that was give you a quick insight I'm not give, fishing out any kind of Swiss secrets here. And the course that we're working on is nothing secret either. It's something that we're trying to get out there to all the police uh, because it's very, very important. Um, and all over the world, it's a major, major problem also. And hopefully, um, you know, um, we can, uh, you know, this this organization is here, is able to get a better foothold uh, in Switzerland and get more police uh, educated in this this arena this side switzerland from what i was told today is about 30 years uh behind when it comes to all this kind of stuff so which is pretty sad because it's uh basically the crossroads of europe when it comes to drug trafficking when it comes to human trafficking when it comes to uh criminologies crossing the borders this kind of stuff and although the swiss do a super great job at maintaining their borders they are open borders 
okay? Um, and uh, they're not, uh, I say open because there's no wall between Switzerland and France, Switzerland and Austria and Italy and Germany. And uh, so it's, it's open. So uh, um, people can freely just cross over, e even if they're illegally doing it. And coming into the country is not illegal either. You can just, you can drive up to the border. If you have a passport, you can get to the country. And, and it just does happen. Now, they capture a lot of drugs. They capture a lot of things crossing the borders, that kind of stuff. They're very vigilant here. But like I said, they're still, like every other, you know, the crime changes. And they're they're working to adapt to it. So anyway, um, I want to thank you guys for watching this short video. It's not very long. I think probably this tail end of it is probably longer than anything else is. It's, it's a lot of quick captions, quick uh, videos I've been able to make today. Quite funny, actually, also, because during the course, the police, like I said, they forgot that they were that they shouldn't be police on this course. For the moment, they should be uh, be portrayed as the victims and uh, seeing it from that. But they, <laughs> they refused to do some things. And it was quite funny. So we had to, like, take a pause. And listen, okay, guess what? You need to do this. This is part of the course. <laughs> and so, they, so they went back and redid it. So it was really funny. But uh um, great. They seem to be very good, very professional. I had a good little chat with them before I ran off uh, with three of them. I didn't get to see all of them because this broke them into three different groups and uh, uh, each of them come into it a little differently. And then afterwards, they investigate the other one's groups, this kind of stuff. So it's quite interesting how how, how, the, how the course runs, this kind of stuff. And, and the team that I work with, very professional, uh, very, very well um, trained and, 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 and working out. And hopefully I'll be able to possibly join them on a permanent basis in the near future anyway i want to thank you all for coming to watch my channel i please i, I really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up uh tell me what you think leave a comment down below like share with your friends and enemies and um hope you enjoyed the video like i said short little video but i thought I'd, you know give you guys as much as i could today but hope you all have a good one and we'll talk to you very soon with another video Bye bye